Billy, a single mother of two boys, Frankie and Bones, does her best to hang on to her house in the broken down city of Detroit. Soon, the vicious town reminds her why it is abandoned in the first place. A teenager named Bones helps his neighbor, who is leaving town, load his stuff in a cargo truck and tells the teen to leave as well. Afterward, Bones scavenges copper pipes from deserted buildings to trade for car parts at the junkyard. He tries to fix his broken car so that he can leave the city behind. Then, he breaks down an abandoned school's wall and pulls out the pipe hidden behind it. Amidst the desolate town, the loud sound of a megaphone alerts Bones. Bully, the local troublesome man, roams around the neighborhood and warns the townsfolk about stealing the copper he claims to be his. Soon after, Bully sees Bones step outside the establishment with a bag filled with copper pipes. The teen drops his bag on the floor and runs away while Bully's friend, Face, retrieves it. Meanwhile, Bones' mother, Billy, talks to Dave, the bank manager, about a loan that the previous banker, Carl, offered her. She learns that Carl is fired, and yet she has to pay the bank in order to keep her house. However, Billy is unemployed and doesn't have the money to pay for three months' worth of rent. Dave suggests that she should hustle and offers her a job but excludes the details. The next day, the uninhabited house across from Billy's gets demolished. Bones watches the construction worker mark their house since they were not able to pay for three months. Billy tells her son that she'll handle their debts soon, but Bones doesn't trust her. Later, Bones sneaks into Bully's territory and retrieves his bag so he'll have something to exchange for money to pay for the house. Then, Bully sees him and shouts, signaling Face who runs after the trespasser. Luckily, Bones manages to lose his pursuer in the woods. He reaches the lake and gazes at the old submerged streetlights, which exposes an underwater road. At home, Billy sums as she watches the demolished house across the street from her window. She worries about their similar fate if she won't pay the bank soon. So, she calls Dave and asks about his offer. At the junkyard, Bones gets fended off for stealing from Bully, who already has the town at his feet. This time, Bones needs money in exchange for his copper. Larry, the junk dealer, warns him about Bully's mercilessness and advises him that it's better to leave town. Meanwhile, Bully confronts his friend for letting Bones escape and cuts off his lips with scissors at a campfire. That night, Rat, Bones' neighbor, asks him if she can watch television at his house. While watching, Bones tells her about the underwater road he discovered. Rat tells him about the towns that went under because of a dam construction, which named their town Lost River. She reveals that her grandmother used to live in the submerged city and has a documentary film about it. Then, she tells him about the curse that has befallen their town after the others went under, which she believes explains their city's misfortune. Bones listens, but refuses to believe her. That night, Billy takes a long ride to her new job downtown. The cab stops in front of a building, and she enters the intricately decorated door. She walks in a nightclub and watches Kitty Cat, a performer, dance on stage. In another turn of events, another actor appears from behind Cat and stabs her repeatedly, which sprays fake blood on the audience. Billy seems horrified by the brutal scene, but the people around her cheer in delight. Afterward, Billy meets Kat in the dressing room, where the actress asks about what she can perform, but the single mother has nothing to offer. Meanwhile, Rat apologizes to her grandmother for coming home late, and replays the video of the old woman's wedding on their television. The following day, Bones brings a rubber boat and floats above the underwater town. He discovers the drowning houses underneath while looking through an aquarium with his flashlight. Then, he sees a monstrous figure which startles him and makes him leave. Shortly after, the teen goes up to Rat's house, and they watch the promotional film about the dam. Rat reveals that her grandfather died constructing the dam, which leaves her grandmother detached from the world and grieve in silence ever since. Then, Rat tells her neighbor that retrieving a piece from the sunken town will break the curse, but Bones remains unconvinced. Meanwhile, in a cab, Billy passes by fire trucks while she travels to her new job. The friendly cab driver tells her that people downtown like to burn houses for fun. Then, he shows concern about her work, but Billy assures him and shows her pocket knife. Arriving at work, Billy meets with Dave and watches Cat act as a knife thrower hits her. After the performance, Cat leads Billy down a purple-lit hallway and shows her where she can make the most money. Behind a glass wall is a room where women enter a transparent mold called a shell. Inside the shell, they stand for the remainder of their work while a client enters and does whatever they please. The single mother worries, but the actress assures her that the shell will protect them as long as it is locked. Back in town, Rat invites Bones for a night walk. She worries for her friend since he stole from Bully, but Bones insists that he didn't steal. Still, she reminds him of the brutal things that the town's bully is capable of doing. Then, the two friends enter an abandoned school and dance in the dark. Later, Rat asks why he hasn't left town yet, to which her friend replies that it's because of his little brother and mother, who's still attached to their house. 
Nonetheless, they both agree to leave town together the day after if given a chance. Meanwhile, Billy brings Frankie to work upon her eldest son's request. Troubled, she watches her youngest son play on fake blood with Kat while she prepares for her act. On stage, Billy cuts and peels the skin off her face to which the audience cheers. At a convenience store, Bones and Rat browse the snacks when Face enters, whose lips are cut by Bully who waits outside. Bones hides upon seeing him while Rat tells him to hide and feigns ignorance then pays at the counter. When she leaves the store, Bully asks for her name and offers a ride home. Afraid, Rat declines so Bully walks towards the store. Rat stops him and takes on his offer in order to save Bones, who's still hiding inside. Bones hears them drive away, so he goes outside but finds out that Rat left with them. At the club, Dave warns Billy about bringing her kid, so she swears never to bring him again. Then, the spotlight turns to Dave, who hosts the stage and performs a song. At the same time, Bones runs after Bully's car as it drives to Rat's house. Bully walks Rat to her house and asks if he could see her pet rat, Nick. She slowly takes Nick out of her pocket and Bully pets it. Suddenly, he takes out his knife and beheads it on her hands. Then, Bully sits on the throne of his car and drives away, knowing that Rat hangs out with Bones. Later, Bones finds his friend crying outside her house and sees her holding her dead pet. Meanwhile, Dave drives Billy and Frankie home from the club. In the car, the single mother asks him about her paycheck which she learns that she'll receive a week after her act. Dave encourages her to try getting in the shells, but she reveals that she's claustrophobic, so she can't last in closed, tight spaces like the shells. Then, the single mother clears things to her manager about only wanting to keep her house. However, Dave is persistent and tries to hit on her, but he stops when he sees Bones glaring at them outside the car. The following morning, Rat somberly digs a hole to bury her pet while Bones watches her from his car. Finally, the teen manages to fix his car, so one night, he drives his mother to work. After Billy goes inside, Bones secretly follows her while holding his mother's purse. Unfamiliar with the place, Bones looks around in confusion and sees an act on stage. Dave recognizes the teen in the crowd and calls him over. The manager tells him where his mother is while Cat watches them from the stage. Shortly after, Bones goes down to the hallway where Dave points him and sees his mother inside a shell. Cat meets her co-worker's son and offers to return Billy's purse herself. She tells him that boys are not allowed inside, so Bones leaves. Across the room, Billy barely sees her son from inside the shell and gets out to catch her breath. In his car, Bones cries and vents his frustration upon witnessing what his mother goes through just to earn money. Determined, Bones drives home and asks Rat to look out for his brother. He tells her that he will retrieve something from the underwater town and break the spell. Apparently, the hopeless teen now believes his friend's tale to desperately save them from misfortune. From a distance, Bully watches his target drive away from Rat's house. Face sneaks inside while Bully drives after Bones. Inside Rat's house, Face lights up a fire in front of the absent-minded grandmother, who ignores the flames getting bigger. Rat and Frankie are upstairs, watching the film about the dam, unaware of the danger below. At the lake, Bones paddles on his boat into the middle of the underwater road. He plunges in the water with a flashlight and searches for something to take ashore. Then, he sees the dinosaur statue from the old theme park in the documentary and decides to bring it with him. He repeatedly comes up for air as he eagerly saws the head from the statue. Finally, the dinosaur's head comes off, and he swims back to his boat. When he's about to paddle ashore, the abandoned street lights turn on one by one in the dark. Meanwhile, Billy goes back in the shell when the automated voice alerts her about an incoming client. Then, Dave enters the room and starts dancing sensually in front of Billy while she watches and cries inside the container. However, as the manager, he can unlock the shell with the remote. Billy presses the button from the inside to lock herself again every time Dave unlocks the shell. When he finally releases her, Billy immediately stabs Dave's ear with her pocket knife and hurriedly leaves in a cab. By the lake, Bones sees his car on fire while Bully revs up his engine. The vicious man speeds up the abandoned road and targets Bones, who carries the heavy dinosaur's head. Just in time, Bones throws the big and solid figure into Bully's car. The dinosaur head smashes his windshield, which swerves him off-road and makes him ram into Bones' flaming vehicle. The hard impact throws Bully out through the windshield of his car. His foot gets caught while his head dips in the water and drowns him. Simultaneously, raging flames swallow Rat's house while she calls out for her grandmother and tries to get her up. Unfortunately, the unmoving old woman remains seated in front of her television, so Rat runs outside with Frankie to save themselves. Then, Bones reaches home where he finds his friend and his brother safe on his porch. Billy arrives later and consoles her neighbor as they watch the flames engulf Rat's house. The single mother now realizes it's best to leave her beloved home. At last, Billy, Frankie, Bones, and Rat abandon the terrible memories of their forsaken town with the cab driver's help. 
A dinosaur's head is dropped on the cab's roof, freeing them from the curse and accompanying them toward a new beginning. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.